Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post, and as you can see, we're once again in Sim Airport. But if you've been following my uh, Bristol Airport Let's Play series, you're right. This is not Bristol Airport. This is, in fact, the airport I built back in last year um, when I had the early access when I was playing the game in early access. But what this is going to be is the first of what may or may not be an ongoing series of Sim Airport mod showcases. If you have been watching my Bristol Let's Play series, you'll know that I've been using quite a lot of mods in that. Generally just to add sort of extra flavour and sort of immersiveness into the game. Uh, actually using genuine airline liveries, using sort of uh, airline labelled ticket desks and so on, different coloured seating, all sorts of extra sort of flavour to the game, which just makes it that much more fun to play. But in recent weeks, we've been seeing a lot more of more interesting kind of mods, which make use of certain features and data in the game to provide you with an even more immersive experience. So that's what I want to look at today. Now, first off, at this point, the first couple of mods I'm going to be showing you are currently available to all players of the game. They are workable in the default branch. The last mod I'm going to show you today will is brand new and only currently works on the Edge branch. So if you're playing sort of the beta version of the game, you can use that mod. If not, then you're going to have to wait for a little while until it's published and available as part of the default branch. Uh, what, what, why am I talking about branches? Because that's important. I am playing this game as of July 2020. So if we're still in July when you watch this, then the likelihood is that the last mod I'm going to show you today will not work if you're on the default branch. You'll need to go into the Steam library, uh, into the properties of the game, and change that so you want to opt in to the beta version, which is called Edge in Sim Airport. But anyway, let's get on to that. First off, being the very first of these showcases, why not check, go back to the very basics and how the heck do I get mods into my game? In Sim Airport, it's very easy. First off, you need to go to the Steam Workshop. You need to go and find a mod which you think looks cool and good and works in your version of the game. Once you've done that, you then they then work immediately within your game, with the exception of airlines. So what I'm going to do now is just a quick flashback to the main menu of the game and just take you through those sort of options for using mods in Sim Airport. So here we are in my main menu for Sim Airport, and as you can see in the bottom left of this menu, it tells me I'm on the default branch of June 2020. That's important. If you're playing a test mod, you'll need to check that the version of your game is appropriate to that mod. Okay, so the mo I've subscribed to a whole set of mods and they're immediately available to me on this mods list here. So these are all the airlines that I have subscribed to a whole variety of real-life air, air companies. Uh, you can also subscribe individually to particular aircraft. Now, what I do, to be honest, is I tend to go to the airline and say, on that airline mod, which aircraft do I need? And make sure that I've got those appropriate airlines, those aircraft downloaded as well, and they will appear in here. And that's all well and good. And likewise, if you've got any other, other objects and assets in the game, they will appear under general mod. So as you can see here, I've got all sorts of signs. I've got different colored benches. I've got different sizes of baggage hubs. Uh, I've got different vending machines, a whole variety of things that are available to you on the Steam Workshop for Sim Airport. Now, beyond this, there's a couple of particular mods, which are sort of programmed or scripted mods, which you have to do a little bit extra with. Also, with airlines, a little bit extra work is needed, but we'll come to that in a moment. Now, some mods require you to enable them to work in the game. If it's simply uh, an asset, an object in the airport, you don't need to worry about this, but some mods, and it will say this on the description of them, you'll need to go into the settings and mod settings here, and I've got two enabled, I've got two mods I've subscribed to, uh, which require to be enabled or not. The first one here is just a, a thundering great web sheet, uh, spreadsheet kind of thing, which gives you a lot of detailed data 
about your airport, how it's been running. And that will actually open up in a separate web browser window. You just need to click yes and your web browser will open up and you'll be presented with all that data. Now this next one uh, is a gate information display mod which we'll look at shortly. Uh, and to be able to use that, you do need to enable it. Again, the mod description should tell you that on the workshop. So just enable it here, click yes or no as required. Okay, so that's good. So let's go into our game. So here we are once again back in our airport. And as I mentioned just a moment ago, airlines need a little bit more extra work before you can use them in your particular game to add them to this airport's schedule, as it were. And that is done through the menu Mod Status and Sharing. And this is a list of the airlines that I am using. Now, if I want to add a new airline into this particular game, I just need to go into Import Airline into the current airport and select it from here. So, for example, if I want to use Qantas Link aircraft in here, I will say yes to this, import Qantas livery and the associated aircraft into this game. Bear in mind that once you've imported an airline into the game, it is actually a bit of a struggle and it's not easy to get an airline out of your save game. So you'll, if you do this, you will forevermore see Qantas in this example at this airport. So whenever you load this save game up, Qantas will always be available to you when you're scheduling new flights. So you import that and that's done. Qantas is now part of this airport. All the other um, mods are readily available and immediately accessible to us, including these two down here. Today's showcase is going to focus mostly on gates and associated assets. Now this is a face recognition gate. So it replaces the standard ticket agent desk and as you can see does not require a member of staff. But it works in exactly the same way as a ticket agent desk does. So if we take this one here, you assign it to a stand, to that gate, and you can also assign it to a queue. Like in this case, I've assigned it to this first class queue here. Now, there is a charge for using these. You can't just have technology without a cost. What is that man doing standing there? Uh, he's waiting for Air Malta. Oh, 8.10. You're a bit early for your flight, sir. Yeah, by about four hours. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, yes, there is a cost to these, um, which kind of replicates the cost of a member of staff. Uh, the, I believe the current charge is $120 per day per unit. So each of these will cost you something to run, which is fair enough. I mean, you're saving on labor costs, if nothing else. And they work rather brilliantly. And you just find those in here. Uh, the thing with mods is they always appear underneath the vanilla, the base game assets. So this is everything from base game it's only when we get past that do we start getting into the modded options. And you'll see them turning up. Uh, where are they? They'll start turning up down here somewhere. <laughs> uh, they are a long I've got a lot of stuff in here. Uh, toolbox, no, here we are. So they start with the word mod in brackets, and that's all the mods down there. So they will always appear at the bottom of any particular uh, build list. Okay, but I'm looking for gate stuff here. So this is the unstaffed gate agent desk, $5,000 as opposed to the $1,500 for a gate agent desk. Gosh, they are expensive, aren't they? And you just place them wherever you want them and obviously design your queues to, to fit them appropriately. Well, that is all very nice indeed. And one thing your passengers will, of course, want in your airport is information. They will need to know what gate to go to to catch their particular flight on the assumption of course their flight is going to turn up and leave and we have a variety of ways of providing that information we have the base game assets we have these little information displays we have the slightly bigger sort of ceiling mounted displays up here as well we also have a variety of different assets pro to provide information uh, a couple of which i particularly like we have here 
uh, where are we? the arrival and departure information boards. Now they are just like the base game assets except they are specifically labelled as arrival and departure. So you can see in here, now obviously this one, where would this work best? This probably works best downstairs, not that we are downstairs, uh, here in the in the sort of foyer, the entrance lobby to the airport. So we'll put one down there. Now this does provide the information zone, just like any of the base game assets do. Now one thing I've noticed with the mods, uh, certainly for information, is they tend to provide a very high information load over that fairly small area. So if we uh, come out, if we get this going a bit quicker, get these guys to remove uh, the base game information displays. There we go. And put in my new information board. The arrival information board. You can see there's a very intense information display there. So we'll just pop you in there. Uh, perhaps uh, another one round here. There you go, and people can see when their flights are arriving. Likewise, in the departure lounge, they might like to know what their departure, sh but departure schedule is looking like. So we can stick one up here, for example. So they're very nice, they are static, as I said. They simply display departures or arrivals as a heading and a whole host of information. However, if you're watching my Let's Play series, You'll have spotted me using the first release of this mod, but it has since been updated in an exciting way. Now not only do we have the sort of standard ceiling mounted or wall mounted display option, we have various a different sort of shading of them as well. If I can click correctly, there you go. Whole new look and feel to them. Okay, now the f wonder of these mods is that they are dynamic. So, for example, if I put this in here, let's get the game going, and say put a small one down here on the wall. Now, unfortunately, they do require free space, so I can't place them, for example, behind the chairs or behind the desk or anything like that. It would be nice if you could do that, but there, that is space that is occupied by the gate agent desk as it says there. Okay, however, let's go up to our first floor and just wait for our guys to get these uh, displays into place. Okay, now these are now in use. Now the thing with that's changed, since I first saw these in my Let's, Brist Let's Play Bristol series, is they can now be assigned to gates. So for example, this wall based sign here is clearly for this gate here B2. So what we can do here is assign this display to gate B2. And what that will do is it actually tells you information about what's happening at that gate. So Air Belgium flight FFL 3259 is now at the gate. It was scheduled to arrive at 6.20, it's departing at 8.40, and it is currently at the gate, and it will soon. It's going to be a while before it leaves. Oh, that's interesting. It's now changed. It says boarding. Now, that's... <laughs> that was one of the things I was going to request of the modder, because previously it just said at gate, but now they've the modder has obviously uh, been able to find the information within the game to say, yep, that gate is now boarding. That is very nice indeed. So that's a single gate display, which obviously these little wall mounted ones really suit. But what about the bigger ones? We could assign that to that gate. We could assign it to that gate. Uh, we could assign it to our little remote gate over here. Uh, even our standby gate. Let's do that. Close that. And this tells us what's happening at all of those gates. Arriving, closed, boarding, taxiing, departing, the whole gamut of information is available to you. 
Now, in the very first release of this mod, um, it would automatically give you information about all the gates on the airport, unless it was placed very close to the gate agent desk for a particular gate, in which case it would link automatically to that gate. That doesn't happen anymore. You have to manually assign it, which, to be honest, is lovely. I like that. That is a so much that is so much an improvement on what we had before. But that is one of my favourite mods in the game so far. Now for the final couple of mods that I want to look at, um, I am playing, I have updated my game now to run on the Edge build, the beta build of Sim Airport, and you can see that again on the main screen, bottom left, where it says Edge, of uh, 17th of July 2020. The first of these mods does actually work, I believe, in the default game, but the second mod that I'm going to show you does only work in Edge, and if you have the two installed, on the default branch, it does cause some does cause some unwanted um, destruction of your walls. Um, so, by all means, try the first mod in default branch. But the second mod I'm going to show you, uh, do leave that unless you're running in the edge branch. Okay, so let's get our game started again. So, what I'm going to do for these last couple of mods is start in a new game, and I've got this running in sandbox mode just so that everything is built immediately. It just makes it simpler and easier for me to show these two off. Now, the first mod doesn't obviously have anything to do with gates, but as you'll see, it does sort of come into its own with one of the new mods that we'll be looking at, the last one in this series. So, have you ever thought to yourself, wouldn't it be nice if I could have some more sort of ground textures rather than just grass? or the concrete of the taxiway, or the roads, or sidewalk pavements and stuff. Now you can. There is a mod which works on the default branch, but as I said, it's still tied mostly to our second mod, um, which is only available in, in Edge. So if you get any issues with using this mod, then probably the safest thing to do is unsubscribe, um, or move to the edge branch, depending on how you want to play. Right, this is outdoor floor or textures. Again, I'll actually put links to each of the mods I'm looking at today in the description below. So here we have a whole variety of new textures. They appear in the main construction menu. Um, this took me by surprise when I first saw them. They sit here bang in the middle of your build menu. <laughs> so they move things like foundation, demolish, um, dismantle and stuff down a bit. But there they are. So, for example, I might want my departure, uh, my passenger arrival and departure zones to be more sort of concrete than anything else. So let's lay that down, shall we? Uh, down there. And there you have concrete tiles. Or you could have a different flavour of grass, perhaps. Uh, how does this one look? Around there. Slightly different texture, or perhaps a different one. And there we go. Um, you got uh, what have we got? We've got concrete there. We've got uh, different types of asphalt and gravel. I've got this sort of white concrete here. Put you up there. There you go. That works quite nicely. Uh, this sort of bluer one. How does that look? That looks quite nice. Now, the issue I've got with this is they work rather nicely, but for some of the texture designs, they are too obviously squares, tile squares. Uh, so on the grass, for example, it doesn't work quite as well because it's obviously just tiles of grass rather than a nice continuous area of grass coverage. But beyond that, they work quite nicely, I think. Uh, put you down there. There we go. That's that nice sort of whatever colour that is. Um, no, it doesn't tell me. It's a stone tile. They're all... Uh, oh, that's an asphalt. Oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. And you go in there. Beautiful. Actually, that looks quite nice, doesn't it? That is quite nice. Okay, so that's the outdoor floor tiles. Now, this next and final mod we're looking at now is only available at the moment as of July 2020 on the Edge branch. And that is a whole new set of airport gates, or stands, or whatever you want to call them. Now, if we go into gates here, we find not just our normal vanilla gates, but 
a bunch of new ones and these are here and if I get you out of the way there as you can see it better we've got different sizes of gates uh, these are the large ones and these are the small ones one of the cute things we've got here is a gate with a jetway so this is a small gate with a jetway option which is the connecting floor to um, corridor, the moving corridor that you get to take you from your departure lounge onto your plane. Right, uh, so how do these work? Let's have a look at the small ones first off. Part of the sort of prompting for this was that we could create gates which are smaller than the standard one. So we've got some really small aeroplanes that can uh, turn up at our airports. And it would be nice if we had a gate that was appropriate to them. And that's these gates here. You can go as small as uh, 10 by 10. So that's that little gate there. That is rather nice. Now, the interesting thing here is, is they don't quite line up with the, um, the gate, the door that we have in the existing uh, vanilla gates. So if we go for the standard uh, 15 by 20, uh, 15 by 20, which is basically the same size as the existing gate, but that's moved across slightly. So if I put my gate there, you can see those sort of blue boxes I put there on the planning mode. That's the size of the gate, whereas your normal small gate is that bit larger. So what the modder has done here is they've shaved off the sides. So these are on a sort of five tile um, grid as opposed to the 10 tile grid that I think the standard gates use. One of the benefits of that is that you can run more gates alongside each other. They can be that much closer. So on the standard gate, that's the closest we could get. We can get one more gate in there alongside that existing gate. But using our new small gates here, uh, if we say we'll take the 15 by 20, we can put one there and another one there. So you can run up really close to each other. And the other thing you notice here is they have no floor. So if you're sort of imagining, if you're building an airport out in the wilds of the country, this could be a whole sort of grass uh, airport. It could be run on grass. It could be a country air airfield, or it could be in the sandy deserts of back of beyond somewhere. So this is where you would use those tiles. So here we got, uh, let's put down this tile here, for example, on this gate here. Let's put you in there. And there we are, a whole different look and feel for our airport gates. Uh, we could make this one just um, plain grass. And there it goes. It looks a little bit odd, but that's the effect you can get if you so wished. Uh, or we could make it uh, like that one. I like that one. There you go. Now there are a couple of issues with these gates however. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll demolish, uh, dismantle those gates. There you go. Uh, can I actually demolish those floor tiles? I can indeed. Okay now with some of the gates because they're created on a sort of five tile grid as opposed to ten you will get some unexpected results. This is particularly true of the smaller gates. Uh, so if we go say 15, 10 by 15, now you see this gate here, that lines up very nicely there, as does our 10 by 10 lines up there. So I've got two gates that I can use there. The slight problem we've got though, is that if I were to go into taxiway to link this up. The taxiway is still working on a 10 by 10 grid, a 10, di 10 tile grid. So it works perfectly, it links perfectly into this small gate. But this small gate, because it's on a five tile grid, it doesn't quite match where the taxiway will go. So if you're building that size gate, which is the 10 by 15, and it was indeed, then you do need to be aware that it is a different alignment to the base game gates. So it works perfectly well, 
but you'd have to have it your your building and your taxiway will be on a different alignment a slightly different alignment to what you would use for the other gates in the game so you'd have to line it up a bit like that and that way you could run your taxiway to it uh, where's the taxiway let's go to taxiway and the taxiway will run, run out there to that gate perfectly now this is an issue for not only does it not look good by having your gate standing over the taxiway but it will actually make the operation of the gate malfunction what I've seen is when I had a, an aircraft standing at this gate none of the passengers would ever board that plane and my suspicion is it's because this gate was not laid properly over the taxiway it was on the wrong grid um, now the modder and the developers are all working together as a collaborative team so these sort of issues will be sorted out one other thing which will be sorted out as well by the modder is they are planning to add remote gates to this so these will be your new style gates which you can attach to a terminal build terminal building or a remote gate which they don't have at the moment so watch this space as it were this particular mod should have remote gate capability at some time in the nearish future hopefully okay so that's it that's those gates um i should have a build ready to show you these gates in operation so let's have a look at that so here we are back in our airport and our first plane is about to arrive and our information display tells us where gate a2 it has landed there it is now when you place these new style gates it does tell you on the build menu what sort of planes they are ideally suited for so if we go to our small gates here so our little 10 by 10 gate which is what these two here are it suggests for really small planes around 20 passengers now the smallest game smallest plane in the base game is the beach i think which carries about 20 or up to 50 passengers something along those lines so it should fit on there well but these gates are also suitable for new modded aircraft which are that much smaller sort of little private aircraft as you can see here it works quite well for an ordinary small aeroplane but it does overhang the gate rather <laughs> which is a little bit odd um, oh and that's something else I've seen it do the way it spins into the gate is a little awkward on there now you see here this little this is a beach isn't it Beechcraft 19 that fits very nicely onto the 10 by 10, 10, by 10 gate uh, this is a 10 by 20 why is nobody boarding this plane yet oh they are there they go yeah so here we are this is pretty much all the workshop uh, assets in use are new gates with the outdoor tiles which are really ideally suited to work on the edge branch as of July 2020 the uh, the outdoor tiles should work on default um, but be aware there may be some issues with walls um, certainly if you also have these gates installed on default they don't work um, they will cause you issues but the information gates which you assign to a gate the information displays rather which you assign to a gate work on default as indeed do the face recognition uh, gate agent desks well it's not really a desk is it <laughs> so they work perfectly well uh, one little thing finally on the information displays is you can assign the display to a gate at the moment you can't assign a gate to a display so you can't assign it to one of these display units uh, that may well be fixed in a, in a future release of the game and finally on these uh, new style gates they do upgrade in exactly the same way as any other gate uh, you can add fuel ports and if you're on a small gate the small gate stairs so that's it I um, hope you've enjoyed this uh, first of my sim airport workshop mod <laughs> showcases that is odd when it's on too small a gate. Um, if you have, it'd be great to hear from you. A little bit of a like would be lovely. A click on the old thumbs up would be wonderful. If you've uh, any thoughts, uh, suggestions for other mods I can look at, uh, please do let me know in the comments box below. 
Uh, indeed, if you've got a mod that you've created that you'd like me to have a look at, then again, do let me know. Uh, and a reminder that direct descriptions, sorry, direct links to all the mods on this in the showcase on the workshop are in the description below. But from me, Ajax Post here in Sim Airport with the first of my mod showcases. Thank you for joining me today and I hope I'll see you again soon. But until then, bye bye for now.